today's coffee pod is a little bit different whereas I'm going to shine the spotlight on you whether you particularly like that or not <laughs> okay <laughs> um but we did recently at the Acorn Christian Healing Hub conference um announce your retirement which yes. is the 31st of December this year so yeah. we just wanted to take a moment to ask you some questions hear okay. about your experience it's been what 11 years that you've been director of acorn yeah it will be yeah yeah, yeah. so are you happy for us to just take some questions? yes come on let's let's go down memory lane let's okay <laughs> wonderful so a big one to start with um over the 11 years that you have been the director of acorn um what have you seen in acorns ministry what are some things that you you know have stayed in your heart and in your head I think, I think I guess the first thing I would say is I have had the privilege to work with some incredible people mm. as you go through it, you know, historic members of staff and right through to our trustees and to the team now. I just think, you know, I, I've just seen them. I've seen people grow and not, not just because we taught them stuff, but I've seen them get bigger in heart and in faith. Mm. And, and, and I think Acorn's been one of those environments where you're encouraged to take a risk and and knowing that people love you and whatever and so i've seen people yeah i've seen people come and go i have seen um people added to the team and who have come in as one thing and then suddenly ended up another thing and and you think wow god that's just amazing um and you know you as in point uh, in case of point you know i mean i remember when you when you first came and you were doing an admin thing and just to look at the fact that you're now co-director of acorn i think it's absolutely outstanding because it seems that acorn was a place where we genuinely believe that the holy spirit could work in people and change them um we've had our fair share of ups and downs you know um leaving whitehall chase was was a difficult moment for many and i understand that but it was an absolutely essential moment for us and um, i mean you know lisa actually if we hadn't done it we wouldn't be here now yes right yeah and actually it was an incredible moment with the trustees then of of grace of seeing literally a moment before if you like the titanic sank yes. to get on a lifeboat and 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 say this ministry needs to be um Growing so, and I think perhaps one of the things I love about it is, um, as I look at the hubs and the people there, it's like we've been able to plant out Wyatt Hill Chase a lot more times oh, yeah. in a lot more locations. So, but I mean, plus I've seen I've seen people healed. I mean, I've seen things that are dramatic, and only God could do. I've seen people walk. Um, you know, I've seen God do some incredible things, and we've also had you know our sorrows too. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that's a hard, well, not a hard question. It's a, it's a lot to put into a very mm. short period of time. And I know that there'll probably be periods before you you do reach your retirement where we can hear a little bit more um, about some of these sort of special memories. Um, I have a particular picture in my head that links, I think links to this next question I've got for you. I remember once we were in the chapel at Whitehill Chase and we were having our Tuesday service and you were extremely excited just by the presence of the Holy Spirit and you were clapping and you were saying, if I could, I would fly <laughs> <laughs> because you were just so joyful and so excited by um, what was going on there. And the reason I brought that out is because I think you you are an excitable person in a good way. You get excited <laughs> by the presence of Jesus. You get excited by the healing hubs and like the things you've just mentioned but are there any things for you that you, ha you know I could say I think this excited you but what yeah. has excited you about being a part of this ministry I think um a, a number of things I mean I, I, do, I remember praying for a lady on uh on a walking frame at a conference uh and she came forward for prayer and, and just said I haven't got any balance Oh. And I and I I just prayed, you know, very simple. But you know, we were all there praying. And we, I just prayed for very simple. And in that moment, I just said, um, "Do you want to try this out?" Oh, so right. she said, "What now?" So I said, "Yeah, you know." 
And I said, well, you know, so she said, well, what can I do? So I said, why don't you um, take a walk with me down the aisle? And so I just gave her my arm and she walked down the aisle and then she turned around and came back again down the aisle. And she said, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> and, and, and her face was a beautiful picture. She realized that Jesus had come. I remember praying for a guy, some team would know, and literally saw his knee reconstruct yeah. in front of me and heard it as bones moved and stuff. And then he got up and he, he started almost stamping around the room, you know, and, and I, I'm panicking going, oh, good, slow down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, but I, do you know one of the funny things? I, I remember being in uh, Norway mm -hmm. and um, praying for uh, uh, a couple, and they, they had a, two, uh, a boy and a girl friend, they had a friend with them who um, had injured her back. She was a gymnast. Okay. And um, I I was just about to say, so would you pray for the girl? And I was just about to pray for her. And I, the Holy Spirit just nudged me and said, no, 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 pray for those two and then let them pray for the girl. Mm. And so I said, okay, look, I'm going to pray for you and then you can pray for them. Because one of the things I passionately believe is that you don't have to be a special person in the healing ministry. God uses anybody and, and i genuinely mean this lisa if god can use me he can use anybody and so i just prayed for this cut these two two young people it was a youth <laughs> meeting i prayed for these young people and i said oh you know lord just use them right now something will never in, in whatever and and so i said so you pray for her and and then somebody tapped me on the shoulder and i turned around and said oh you know, can i help you and she says yeah i've got um a cancer or operation tomorrow would you pray for me? So I, again, I was just about to pray for them, for her. And I turned around just to see how this couple, these young, young people were doing on. And I, I just watched as they prayed for this girl. And I literally watched, she was doing backflips uh. across the front of the church. And I was sort of going, oh, um, you, uh, <laughs> you oh, oh. And they, you know, but they thought this is great. So the woman said, would you pray for me? And I said, well, I could do. But actually, I think these young people should pray for you because so far they've got a 100% track record. <laughs> of doing great. And they prayed for her. And I love that. I love the fact that the Acorn teams are full of people who perhaps sometimes the church would say, you're not qualified to do this. Or even might, we might do it ourselves. But God uses them incredibly. And so I'm really excited. I love it when Jesus turns up. Yeah. And and you just know that there is more than good organization and planning and good teaching and good meetings, that there is something of the Holy Spirit that is so present that if you could just see into the next dimension, you'd see it. Yeah. I love that. And this, I mean, you've shared so many amazing stories as well when we are at the academy and just other ministry and training events. Um and so if some of you, um, you know, you might want to just listen to some of the stuff that we've got online mm. and be encouraged by some of these stories that Wes has experienced. But um, as you mentioned just at the start, there have also been some challenges um, in the mm. last seven years. Is there anything in particular that's challenged you? I I always, I mean, we always made a point that if we, prayed for somebody and we got close to them not just anybody you know whatever but I remember we had people who had come to Acorn specifically and um and you know and alas they died yeah. and so we've been to funerals yeah. because that's part of the healing ministry to stand with people as they grieve and sorrow um I wish looking back now I wish I had been less bothered about what other people thought mm -hmm. i know some people may look at me and say but you don't bother any of but <laughs> actually i i generally wish i had been more courageous than i had yeah. um i wish i hadn't sort of shaped it just because people were having a bad day yeah. um but also I, I think i think the thing that's challenged me always is there is always more there's always more just when you think just when i think i sort of exhausted what God can do and what I can see, there's always more. I think the big challenges were when people didn't like the changes that we had to make because of White Hill Chase. 
and I think some people were um, were very negative, but I understand why they were negative because of their own sorrow and pain yeah. about losing that. Um, and, you know, I, I think in a sense, it, perhaps, you know, it was inevitable, but there were big challenges. There's challenges, Lisa, always in doing the thing that is right before God, even when other people don't think it is. Yeah. And that's a hard one. Um, but I've, I've loved... I've loved the fact. Do you know what, I've loved the fact that as the team has grown, they have challenged me to keep going. You know, because <laughs> you, you see them doing things, you think, "Oh, well, I better get on and you know, <laughs> pray more and, and, and get yeah. more involved." And so I've loved that. That's been great. Yeah. They are very much. I mean, it, it is a family, and in family, you you're honest with one another, and I think you've had that in encouragement and in challenge at the same time from our team and actually that's been a huge eye-opener for me because you don't really experience that in many other places no and, and i like the fact lisa uh, you just brought a point out i like the fact that in acorn we can be honest without falling out yeah yeah you know, I, I get i get so sad when churches are, uh, you know fall out because somebody's just been honest yeah and, and i and i love the fact that you know um, acorn can be honest and still journey together because it's not personal. It's about getting the kingdom here. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I've got one, well, it's one question, but I'm taking it in two parts. Um, okay. so you, you're currently preparing to hand over um, your directorship at ACORN. And it would just be really cool to know maybe some of your hopes for ACORN um, and then also your hopes for the Christian healing ministry mm. in um i okay i small one for acorn really um i think acorn is um in a great place to provide prayer ministry for others and i think growing hubs from i don't know is it the 10 now to going to 20 to 30 i think that's entirely possible but shall yeah. i tell you what my biggest hope for acorn is yeah i think god wants to use acorn to change the way the church in this country understands and experiences healing mm. Mm. right i think yeah we 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 keep providing it person by person absolutely but i think for acorn there is a bigger calling which in a sense was where Bo bishop morris maddox started yeah. he wanted to change the way the church understood and experienced healing so that it becomes just a part of the discipleship's life and that's my passionate hope for yeah. acorn that it, it it's that its voice is heard with love and compassion and with authority and people go oh okay we better pay attention to this uh, yeah. i think i think because of that then for the healing ministry honestly i would just love it to become so normal that in any church, you know, every disciple of Jesus could pray for somebody to be healed and it would work. Yeah. Because it would just say, hey, the kingdom of God is here. Jesus is here. Yeah. And and I, I love the fact that we're able and Acorn's been able to um, go to places, churches and inspire people. That's great. I think they keep doing that. Um, but actually, also, I think uh, we want the church to to come out of its little rabbit hole and say, this is what we stand for. Yeah. And, you know, and we give healing to whoever needs it in Jesus name. Mm. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll reflect on this podcast in a year's time and see how things are coming along. But I mean, yeah. I, I feel so hopeful on those two things you shared because we're already seeing it and we might not be seeing it on the scale we want the end result to be um at the moment but we are seeing through our hubs and through when we go and speak to churches and share with people there's a sh you know there's a shift in people's thinking yeah. when we do share and when we obviously pray for people and so i think yes at the moment it, it might not feel like it's exactly where we want it but it's definitely happening um so i think you know for you reaching your 11 years already what you're providing and your passion is just leaking out and so i would say that as an encouragement to you um you. but we won't get too softy on this podcast because we've still got okay. 
few months left <laughs> and we've still got lots of wonderful things um coming up um within acorn and, and where we're going out and sharing at different speaking events as well um so wes thank you so much just for briefly sharing yeah. some of those things with us it's, it's really lovely to hear from you um, on a more personal level and um, we look forward to meeting those of you in the next coming months and on our next podcast so thank you Wes and thank you for yep. everyone bye-bye <laughs>